What's up guys, it's Kitchen 3 here. And today what you're gonna see is you're gonna see bacterial testing from the actual uh, self, UV cell phone sanitizer from Violite. Now, I got this product out for review a while ago, but I never got the chance to actually bacterially test it. And I have access to my school's lab today, and so I'm gonna do that for you. Now I'm recording this after I actually did the testing, so I'm just gonna show, explain to you guys what you guys are gonna see. Uh, first of all, you're going to see this machine right here, this apparatus. This here is called a laminar flow hood. This is the little environment that you work with and you culture your things, you transfer bacteria and stuff like that. And basically what this is, right now I have a UV light on and that basically kills any bacteria that's inside of this machine right now. And um, as you guys may know, UV light obviously kills germs and that's what this is supposed to do in smaller fashion. And so basically I'm, I had this turned on with some of the things inside and those things include uh, cotton swabs to transfer the bacteria from my iPod to the petri dishes, which are these circular discs that you saw that you're gonna see in my video. And this little uh, beaker was filled with distilled water, so I could easily transfer the bacteria because you can't really transfer bacteria on a dry surface. And the reason why I'm telling you all this now is because this thing has a blower on it. It circulates air and it gets pretty loud. So it's not even warm enough yet, but it gets really loud once it's warmed up. And so that's why I'm doing this now. I'm gonna be doing a voiceover later to uh, show you guys what I was doing. Um, but, uh, oh yeah, you also saw me spray this stuff. This is ethyl alcohol. Uh, alcohol obviously kills germs and stuff. So I sprayed that on my arms, my gloves, my hands. Um, I wore a mask. Uh, I sprayed everything before it went inside this uh, flow hood just so I can keep everything clean. And um, hopefully you guys are convinced that this is a very uh, controlled experiment. I've been doing science fair and bacterial testing for two years now before this and so I'm pretty experienced with that and so hopefully you guys will be convinced that this was a fair test and I'll explain more while I'm actually showing the video of what I was actually doing the procedure wise but if we head over here um, this is the incubator obviously it's where you keep your uh, petri dishes after you're done and currently right now the plates are flipped upside down because if you guys know anything um, about bacterial testing when you actually plate the bacteria you have to plate it like this but when you actually grow it, you have to flip it over so that none of the condensation on the plate will actually like hit the bacteria if it's like this you know so that's why like that. yeah I'll explain more to it as I'm going along the way through the video but this is just a short explanation of what I was doing and what you guys were seeing so we'll just proceed to the video of um, my procedure right now so as you guys can see right now I'm spraying all the stuff inside the laminar flow hood with ethyl alcohol it's a very generous coating so you guys can be assured that the bacteria inside there is pretty much killed and I just did a cut there because I took a while just to get gloves and stuff because they're on the other side of the room but um yeah currently right now I'm just readjusting the camera and turning the normal light on thus turning off the UV light and right now if you can see in the reflection of the glass I'm spraying something and currently it looks just like a rubber glove but my iPod is actually inside that. Now, why I'm putting it inside a rubber glove first is because I need to somehow sterilely transfer my iPod inside the flow hood without uh, getting the germs from my iPod actually inside um, and contaminating stuff in the flow hood. Uh, now, right now, I'm just putting on a mask because uh, as standard procedure, you are not supposed to talk and anything that, you know, your breath can still contain bacteria and that, thus that's why I have to put a mask on. So right now I'm just taking a normal sharpie marker and spraying it with ethyl alcohol and making sure that I spray the part that you, you know, touch when you write so that that part's sterile as well. And again, coating the inside of the flow hood and the surface with a lot of ethyl alcohol to make sure that no germs have, you know, flowed into it uh, while, you know, throwing the marker inside. And now I'm just slipping on gloves and uh, the reason why I'm having actually a lot of difficulty is because I actually sprayed my hands with ethyl alcohol and as you guys probably know putting on plastic gloves with wet hands is not an easy task. So now that I finally got my glove on what I'm doing now is that I'm taking uh, these petri dishes and I'm spraying them with ethyl alcohol and all those puffs and little wisps are uh, the ethyl alcohol and as you can see I'm spraying myself as I'm you know putting my hand inside and now I'm slipping on my other glove and then I'm, I'm going to respray uh, both my arm and my hand up to the forearm and up to the elbow of both hands and then what I'm going to do is basically just going to rub it in just to make sure that everything's got an even coat of alcohol and that germs on my hands and my forearms 
um, are pretty much killed. And right now I'm, as silly as it sounds, just mentally preparing myself, just double checking to make sure I have everything I need inside the flow hood so I don't have to come back out. And you'll notice that my forearms and my elbows never touch uh, the table or the surface. Again, that's just standard procedure when you uh, culture cells and bacteria, again, to reduce contact. And currently right now, I just kind of moved this stuff back a little bit so I have some more working space. And I am just labeling the petri dishes so that I know uh, what plate corresponds with, you know, what when I actually plate the bacteria and or transfer it from whatever source that it may be. And I think I'm just labeling them before, after, and water because, yeah, I have, well, the before violite, after the violite. That's supposed to be the before plate, but you can't see it. Uh, so yeah, the water before and after, which you guys will probably see at the end, I'll explain those more. But it's before, obviously, and after the UV cell phone sanitizer was used. And now I'm just like moving them back a little bit so I have a little more room. And yeah, oh, I had an extra plate in there, so that's why I'm labeling a, a supposedly fourth one. but. I only need three, but I put four in, so I just put that one in the back aside. And now that I am actually looking at the petri dishes, I'm now flipping that one over so that I can plate it. And currently opening the cotton swabs, and there's two in each one, so I'm just uh, taking my time to take one out, which is a little difficult with considering that you know you're wearing rubber gloves. And now I'm just taking a small sample of the distilled water that I'm going to be using for the rest of the experiment and then carefully plating it onto that specific petri dish. Now you'll notice that I am lifting the cap just ever so slightly. Again, that's to reduce any bacteria that's potentially there to potentially get onto the auger, thus contaminating that specific plate. And setting that aside, uh, what I'm going to do now is just relabel it because sometimes when you label things and there's still some alcohol in it, it kind of smudges, so I was just relabeling it so that it was very nice and very clear. And now I'm flipping over the plate, which is before I put my iPod in the UV cell phone sanitizer. Now you'll notice that I tried to not touch my iPod as much as possible. Again, reducing contact is the best way to reduce contamination if there is bacteria on there, which I'm pretty sure there is. Now currently I'm wetting the cotton swab because it's really hard to transfer bacteria um, on a dry swab. And you'll notice that I'm swiping uh, vertically up and down because I know some of you guys were going to say, oh, well, the keyboard section is a little bit dirtier because you use it more often. And so that's why I'm sweeping up and down so that I get half of the keyboard and then half of the top screen. And again, just transferring that, just swabbing that onto that Petri dish very nice and thoroughly to make sure that I get an even coat. Uh, throwing the cotton swab into the quote un unquote disposal part of the flow hood. And now I'm just renaming the plate again. As you saw, it was B4. And so I'm just going to put that aside. And then what I'm going to do now is basically the big part of the experiment, which is to place my iPod into the UV cell phone sanitizer. And now you'll notice that this is pretty much the only time I touch my iPod because after I put the cap on and after the light starts glowing blue as you see there. That is the time when I uh, am just gathering up everything and then taking it out. Right now I'm just taking the trash out and then leaving it as it goes. And then I'll cut to the section where the Violet uh, UV self and sanitizer is uh, stopped working after its cycle and then I'm just going to continue from there. So now that the UV cell phone sanitizer has stopped its complete cycle as you can tell by the lack of glowing blue light, I'm now going to respray pretty much the whole flow hood again to make sure that, you know, when I left and when I'm about to enter, there are no bacteria there. And this is a completely new set of gloves, and it, you know, you have to dispose of your gloves once you bring your hands out of the flow hood because any air in, any air has potential bacteria in it. So I had to dispose of those and get new gloves, which of course, like I said before, are quite a pain to put on. And then I'm going to, again, spray my hands and arms thoroughly with ethyl alcohol. And then I'm just going to put the spray ball down a little bit, and then it's going to rub uh, my hands and arms to make sure that, again, alcohol is covering them so that 
no bacteria enters the flow hood via my arms. Uh, sorry for that camera bump, but now I'm just going to go in again. And uh, I did spray everything before I went in. I'm not sure if you guys saw that, uh, but I'm taking the UV self hand sanitizer, opening it, uh, withdrawing my iPod, actually not yet, taking the after plate first, flipping it over, and then now I'm going to take my iPod. Now I'm a little more generous with touching my iPod because supposedly, you know, the UV light inside the self-end sanitizer has killed all bacteria, well not all, but 99.9% .9 of the bacteria that's in there. So I'm a little bit more generous to touch it. If you guys think that contaminated the experiment, you can go ahead and think that, but I'm pretty confident that it wasn't. I'm still trying to make as low contact as I am possible. Now, I purposely aimed my iPod towards the camera to show you that this is a different side of the iPod. This is not the same side that I swabbed uh, when I plated the before plate. And so this is just because you got some of you guys might say, oh, well, some of the water might have washed the bacteria off the first time, and so this is obviously going to be less the second time. Well, no, I didn't touch the left side the first time. I only touched the right side and swapped that side. I purposely left that half for the after plate, which is the one I'm plating right now. Um, again, you'll notice that I only lift the lid very little, very minimally, uh, again, to reduce chances that it'll get contaminated by some bacteria that could potentially be in the air, which probably isn't. Um, so now I'm just labeling this plate as the after plate, so, you know, just for reference and so that I can identify it later. And now, since I'm pretty much done with the whole experiment, I'm just basically taking my time to read the plates to make sure I have the labels correctly. Um, and to see what's on them and so I can place them in a logical order and now since I'm taking these things out I'm going to now transfer them to the incubators and excuse me while I turn the camera a little bit and focus it to point at the incubator and even though this is in more of an aerated situation where you know it's more open to the air uh, I still have to you know, be cautious and stuff. And again, spraying the seal around the glass door and, you know, the inside with ethyl alcohol, as well as the handle. And also my arms again, since they've been exposed to the air, trying to kill off as much bacteria as I possibly can, uh, so that when I open the door, which I am right now by turning the knob so slightly, and then spraying the petri dishes again before they go in, because there's a chance that on the table that I put them down on, there's a little bit of bacteria. So I'm going to be taking those plates up from the table now. And then I'm just going to be spraying them all around from every angle uh, with ethyl alcohol to make sure that the bacteria that's possibly on the plate does not get transferred into the plates themselves. And I'm just going to open the incubator just ever so slightly, just so that I can put uh, the petri dishes inside the incubator. And now you're just going to spray the inside of the incubator with a lot of alcohol to make sure that no bacteria is inside of it as much as possible anyway, and then sealing it shut. And so that's pretty much the procedure part.